Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Brick and Mortar, but before I begin, please keep in mind that this is a paid preview, so take my opinions with a grain of salt. That being said, let's talk about this game, because I think this is a really interesting economic strategy game. Um, the thing that stands out the most to me is how it models supply and demand, because I think it does that really well. Uh, there, It is a fairly simple system, but uh, the engagement with what you're doing and what other players are doing uh, to determine the market, it, it just works really well for me. And I really, I really dug it. Um, so you've got those market cards, and they have you know various amounts of the different goods, uh, and, and some of them are going to be more common than others. Food is much more common than art, and you can put out more food. Like food, you can get up to four in the supply or demand. Art, you can only have one or two. It never goes more than that. So it models that uh, scarcity element really well, and on top of that, you also don't really know what is going to come out. You have control over what you contribute to supply and demand, but the other players are going to have as much, if not more, influence on it than you. Uh, we didn't get to it in the run-through, but the more you extend out your uh, the stores in your buildings, uh, the more you are able to uh, affect your hand. You can discard some of the cards before or after uh, placing your market cards, or you can just play an extra market card if you have all four uh, of your uh, stores in your building. So you need to be able to, to keep up with influencing the market, but on top of that, you also need to make sure you are, are supplying as much as you need and uh, demanding as much as you need, or you need to be able to figure out what everyone else is going to do, which ends up being a huge part of this game. So I think that, that is done really well. Now there is a bit of math involved, especially when you're handling buying and selling to different stores, some of which have different modifiers than others, so if you don't like dealing with a lot of numbers, that might be a bit of an issue for you. I personally don't have a problem with it, and the mechanics that are uh, behind all of that are fairly simple. So as long as you can handle the, all the math that you have to do, it, I think, works out really well and in a really interesting way. Um, the other thing uh, I, that I mentioned a little bit before is, is predicting your friend's behavior. That is such an important part of this game, and it, it is... It's fascinating, um, mainly when it comes to uh, buying and selling. So when, when, there's, when there's no constraint on the supply or the demand, everyone can get everything they want and you're all friendly. And that will happen for a good part of the game. But as soon as you start butting heads, that's when things really get kind of tense. Um, you've got your, you know, your little uh, bidding dial and you're determining how much you are going to pay for it. If you're if you're buying, you need to say how little can or how much can I afford to pay for this. And if you're selling, you're saying how little can I afford to sell this for. Um, and sometimes it's like you, you buy at kind of a medium price, and but then when you have to sell it, you end up going much lower because you're like, okay, I need to sell this before it just falls off the shelf, and I I, I need to get some amount of money. So even if I'm not making a huge profit, or maybe even if I'm taking a loss on it. I just need something so that I can invest in, uh, you know, another building so I can get uh, get out of this business. Maybe I want to close this store because it's something I didn't quite get to in the run through, but you can close uh, some of the stores that you have. Like your starting bodega is not very good, and if you've got better stores, you might want to just close it so you can bring in something new. Thing is, the stores are worth points as long as they're in your building, and the bodegas are worth some some points. So maybe you don't want to do that. There's always these really interesting decisions to be made. Um, but when you're going up to uh, head to head uh, with another player, that's when things get really, really involved and, and in a good way. Because now you have to determine, okay, I need at least this much money for to sell to sell these things. So do I think they are gonna try to sell it for higher? In which case I, I'm gonna be safe. Or do I think they're gonna sell it for lower? In which case do I also go go even lower or do I just not sell anything? Because if I try and sell it and I can't, I just lose the product, uh, which, oh, it is painful when you just lose product like that. Um, but it doesn't always happen. Usually you can figure some things out. Usually you can sell something uh, or maybe you just decide, hey, I'm not gonna sell this round. I'm gonna, I'm, I know I'm not gonna be able to beat them on it this round. I'm gonna try and wait until next round, make sure there's a little bit more demand uh, so I can actually get some of this product out the door and make some money on it. It's 
it ends up being really, really intricate in, in, in a way, but it also involves, you know, figuring out what your friends are like. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed that about it. Now, I'm playing a two-player game, which, uh, or I did in the run-through, and that has some very direct uh, confrontation, but also it leaves a fair amount of room kind of to monopolize different, uh, different goods. Unless everyone goes for these multi-good uh, multi stores, it's likely that someone is going to have a monopoly on something which means that they're going to get a lot of money. And that's, you know, it's not something that you just want to let happen, but it's not the end of the world. When you're playing with a three or, three or four player game, it's much more likely that things are going to become constrained. Uh, now, you're also putting out more supply, you're putting out more demand, so maybe everyone's still going to get along, but uh, you're, you are also a lot less likely to be like the Apple guy. You're not going to be the only Apple guy around if you're playing with three or four players. Um, but, but I think that I played with three, I played it with two, and I feel like it works well no matter what. It does present a slightly different experience, but I don't think it works any any worse at two. Um, I think I think it works really well at three. I haven't played it at four, but I imagine that would maybe get a little chaotic, but also maybe be really, really interesting. A lot of the stuff is done simultaneously. Uh, in the run-through, I had to switch left and right because I'm only one man, but... Uh, so much of this stuff happens simultaneously that the game actually plays at a decent clip. And you get through some of these uh, big moments pretty quickly, which I, I think works out pretty well. Um, and while you can occasionally really screw someone over, that ends up being kind of okay. Um, money, getting a lot of money in this game is important, but it's not everything. There are a number of buildings that are not especially good at buying or selling, but they will give you points in very unique ways. Some of them are, you know, if there's if there's nothing in the uh, supply at the beginning of uh, the advertisement phase, you'll get some points uh, every round for that. Or um, there's like a, a warehouse where if you just stock things in the warehouse, as long as you have stuff there, you'll be generating points every round. Or sometimes you can uh, get points by selling like the extras of uh, items in a specific store. There's uh, uh, here's one example of that. Um, the clothing distributor. If I sell at least three, I may earn uh, two points rather than money for each additional blue cube sold here. So it has space for five. So if I sell four or five, instead of getting the money, I can get the points. You end up making a lot of these really interesting decisions about do I want to get the money right now? Do I want to go for points? While at the same time knowing that if I shoot ahead in points, I will then be at a disadvantage because I will be pushed up in the turn order and I will lose on tiebreakers when it comes to buying and selling. You really want to draft a little bit in this game. It's, there's just so much that you have to wrap your head around. It occasionally can be a little bit confusing to, to know what is a good strategy, but if you can work it out, it is a very satisfying puzzle to, to work on. Um, so I, I've really enjoyed that. Um, there, uh, oh, and the, the, the buying points, uh, aspect of it, I think is especially interesting at the end of each round, you can just invest in yourself. You can buy points. And if you buy a point or two points, that's pretty cheap, but the more points you want to buy, the more expensive it becomes. And so you end up having to always make sure that you're putting in a little bit of money. And I really like that aspect of it because it makes it so that someone isn't just hoarding all the money so that they can like slam down a hundred dollars uh, and get like a thousand points. No, if, if you want to get uh, 10 points over the course of, you know, 10 rounds, that's going to cost $40. If you want to get 10 points in one round, that's 106. The amounts that you end up paying for these high point value uh, moves is a lot. So you really have to, to balance it out as you go. Um, and I, I, I just love that. I think that mechanic is really, really interesting and I, I really enjoy it. So the point is that, yeah, you can make a lot of money, but you will need to convert that money into points somehow, uh, either through just buying it directly or investing in, in buildings or in uh, stores that are going to earn you the points. Uh, and, and that's not always as easy a, of a decision as it, as it might seem. I, the first game that I was playing, we were doing a three-player game, and I was not doing well as far as money went, uh, especially like an early kind of mid-game. 
I was barely making anything when the other two players were making money hand over fist. They had stores that allowed them to buy things really cheaply and then they could sell it at whatever price they wanted. Or the other one had just an absolute monopoly when it came to apples and had stores that let him sell it for more so he could always underbid me um, because he knew he was going to make, make me more money off of it. It was rough, but I managed to invest in stores that gave me points instead of money. And I didn't, I, okay, I didn't win, but I did tie. Uh, I tied for first and then uh, the tiebreaker, um, I believe it was uh, the turn order. Um, and I was at that point uh, behind in turn order. And if you're ahead in turn order, then, then you're the tiebreaker. It's something like that. Anyway. I did well, even though it felt painful as I was going through because I just wasn't making any money. So making money is important, but it isn't the whole game and you need to keep that in mind as you're going. Um, so there's just a lot of mechanical decisions in this game that I think were done very well in a very interesting way. At the end of that game that I played, we just ended up looking through all of these stores because we wanted to look at all of these different abilities that, that the stores had and how, how some of them seemed to work really well uh, with others or um, just all the interesting decisions that you're gonna to have to make through it. Um, beyond that, I also just like looking at this game. It is very, it's kind of just delightful. Uh, the artwork is very cheery. It's it's very nice and pleasant, which is interesting because it kind of belies the cutthroat nature of this game. Um, and it, it's not always really cutthroat. It can be sometimes. It, it absolutely, you can wreck people, but you're not always in each other's faces. And so uh, it doesn't have to be like that. But the artwork would honestly make you think that this is a much more easygoing game than it is. It's, I don't know, it, it reminds me a little bit of Root in that way. You know, you look at Root and you think, like, this is just a fun, like, family game. And then, no, it's, it's cutthroat. You can really get in each other's faces. This is kind of the same thing. But I don't mind that there's a bit of a uh, discontinuity, I guess, uh, between those. Because it still is kind of nice to look at. You know, it's, it's colorful, it's bright, it's cheery, even though, so even though maybe I didn't sell anything this last round and I'm worried about how much money I'm gonna make, I can still look at the board and it'd be nice. Uh, I can still look at my bodega and look at my bodega cat and be happy. Every bodega has a cat in it, which was a smart design decision. I'm gonna say it, it was a good choice. It's a good choice. So. Uh, if you are looking for uh, a pretty intense, but not especially complicated um, economic game, uh, one that you can absolutely destroy people in, uh, then check out Brick and Mortar. Now, if you don't, if you don't like uh, some of those more, more cutthroat games, might not be for you, but if you do, I think you're really gonna get a lot out of this. And uh, that's all I have to say. Oh, one last thing. If you live in America and are able to, vote. Bye-bye.